There are several ways to use stem cells in alopecia. One way is to use factors that will stimulate the activity of the stem cells. We have two kinds of stem cells in the follicle. We have a follicular stem cells and dermal papilla stem cells. And the interaction between those uh, cells are very important. And we know from the studies in, in the mouse that uh, uh, when we give uh, factors, platelet factors, to those cells, this helps the, the follicle in the way of the, of the hair cycle and also giving some thickness to the, to the hair follicle. And that's a good, uh, a good achievement and a good result. The second way to use is to use the cells directly. We can give stem cells and inject in the scalp of the patients. And we can do it several ways. We can obtain those cells by a punch biopsy from the scalp and then do some kind of uh, processation of the, of the cells uh, and inject the cells in the scalp. The, the, the main problem with this method is that we can't reach a high number of cells. We give like some, some hundreds of cells. To, uh, um, so you, 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 you can treat the scalp but only a small part of the scalp. To avoid this, pro to, 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 uh, avoid this, this kind of problem, you can use more cells, achieving the cells from other tissues like the adipose tissue, like the umbilical cord, or li like the, the bone marrow. You can have mononuclear stem cells from the bone marrow. Using those kinds of cells, you can achieve like uh, 20,000, 50,000 of cells, so you can treat larger areas of the scalp. Okay, the third way of doing the thing will be to uh, have a multiplication in vitro of the cells and then injecting the cells. This works, works very nicely in the murine model, but it doesn't work so well in human. Finally, another possibility in the future could be to divide one hair follicle in two and have two viable uh, hair follicles and have one for implantation and the other one in the, in the donor area. So I think these are the four ways we, we can use stem cells in, in the future and probably the best will be the multiplication of the, hairs, of the cells and, and achieving a, a real hair follicle. The problem is that uh, by now it's not possible to build a hair follicle. The interest of the PRP is that in some patients we have limited results with the, with the topical and with the, with the, um, and we, with the drugs we give to the patients and it's a, another way of oiling the machine of the follicle. So I think we can improve our patients a little bit, not much, with PRP. So it's, it's a help for, for some patients. When you, we look uh, for some, some data, like uh, the f photographs of the patients and uh, the, the hair thickness and the hair density, we see that those parameters will improve a little bit in the months after when we do the PRP. The main problem with the PRP is that we don't know if it w will work forever, if, if, if it will improve the patients forever. And you, as you know, androgenetic alopecia is, is forever. So uh, it's expensive because the patient have to do the, the, the treatment several times. Usually we start like uh, once a month and uh, after three months we start doing it uh, each three months. But even though you, you don't know if in the future the effect will, will remain in that patient. Maybe we will reach uh, quickly uh, the possibility of having uh, two hairs from one hair. I think we are going to reach that uh, easier than building a, a, a new hair follicle.